name's Sherlock Holmes and the address is 221B Baker Street. Must be expensive. Uh, Mrs. Hudson, the landlady, has given me a special deal. Owes me a favor. A few years back, her husband got himself sentenced to death in Florida. I was able to help out. Sorry, you stopped her husband being executed? Oh, no, I insured it. Sherlock. <laughs> Afternoon. He's always like that. Here is a question. Why does the episode mention that this victim of a serial killer had numerous lovers? Why is it mentioned that they are particularly numerous? She's been married for at least 10 years, but not happily. She's had a string of lovers, but none of them knew she was married. Oh, for God's sake, if you're just making this up... Her wedding ring, 10 years old at least. The rest of her jewellery has been regularly cleaned, but not her wedding ring. State of her marriage, right there. The inside of the ring is shinier than the outside. That means it's regularly removed. The only polishing it gets is when she works it off her finger. It's not for work. Look at her nails. She doesn't work with her hands. So what, or rather, who does she remove her rings for? Clearly not one lover. She'd never sustain the fiction of being single over that amount of time, so more likely a string of them. Simple. Why is it mentioned that another victim was an adulterer too? I never get cabs. I love you. When? Get a cab. My husband was a happy man who lived life to the full. He loved his family and his work. And that he should have taken his own life in this way is a mystery and a shock to all who knew him. Why is it mentioned that the serial killer was, on the contrary, a devoted family man? The shaving foam behind your left ear, nobody's pointed it out to you. The traces of where it's happened before, so obviously you live on your own, there's no one to tell you. But there's a photograph of children, the children's mother's been cut out of the picture, if she died she'd still be there. Photographs old, but the frames new. You think of your children, but you don't get to see them. Strange father. She took the kids, but you still love them, and it still hurts. So the new scourge has arisen in London: serial suicides. The killer of the suicide victims did the same thing in all four cases. He offered his victims two pills to choose from. One of them was poisoned another harmless. The other pill the killer took himself. Okay, two bottles, explain. There's a good bottle and a bad bottle. You take the pill from the good bottle, you live. Take the pill from the bad bottle, you die. Both bottles are, of course, identical. In every way. And you know which is which? Of course I know. But I don't. Wouldn't be a game if you knew. You're the one who chooses. Why should I? I've got nothing to go on. What's in it for me? I haven't told you the best bit yet. Whatever bottle you choose, I take the pill from the other one. And then together, we take our medicine. I won't cheat. It's your choice. In a way, it is an alternative version of horrific Russian roulette. Ready to play? Play what? It's a 50-50 chance. You're not playing the numbers, you're playing me. The killer has come out victorious in all four cases. His victims were basically killing themselves by systematically choosing the poisoned pills. In terms of pure probability, the right choice should have been made in 50% of cases. However, the killer has won in four cases out of four. And if it wasn't Sherlock, he would keep on winning. I've played four times. I'm alive. The pure probability did not work because of the human factor. To be more specific, the reason why it did not work was the phenomenon of human intuition. The killer 
had intuition of a winner, while his victims did not. But why? For thousands of years, it has been commonly known, in some of the inner circles, that those who fuck around squander their winning intuition. The victims of the Russian roulette from Sherlock are adulterers, and this detail is highlighted surely on purpose. In contrast, the serial killer is a devoted family man and uses his preserved winning intuition for his own pleasure as well as to moonlight. I have a sponsor. You know what? For every life I take, money goes to my kids. The more I kill, the better off they'll be. Naturally, the one who is absolutely disinterested in adultery would have utterly amazing winning intuition. And that is Sherlock Holmes. You don't have a girlfriend then? Girlfriend? No, not really my area. The architecture of the best episode of Sherlock series is perfectly complemented by the conflict between Sherlock and the police. These are the two policemen who extremely hate Sherlock. They are just like the victims. Hello, freak. I'm here to see Detective Inspector Lestrade. Why? I was invited. Why? I think he wants me to take a look. Well, you know what I think, don't you? Always, Sally. You know you didn't make it home last night. Ah, Anderson. Here we are again. It's a crime scene. I don't want it contaminated. Are we clear on that? Quite clear. And is your wife away for long? Oh, don't pretend you worked that out. Somebody told you that. Your deodorant told me that. My deodorant? It's for men. Well, of course it's for men. I'm wearing it. So, Sergeant Donovan. Ooh, I think it just vaporized. May I go in? Now, look, whatever you're trying to imply... I'm not implying anything. I'm sure Sally came round for a nice little chat and just happened to stay over. These two policemen are as adulterous as the victims of the serial killer. That's the true reason they had Sherlock so badly. Like attracts like, while different is hateful. So it's completely unsurprising that the fornicating police is not able to solve any criminal case of at least somewhat noticeable complexity. Without Sherlock, there is despair. I'm breaking every rule letting you in here. Yes, because you need me. Yes, I do. God help me. Certainly, Sherlock is an excellent series. However, all series, even the best of them, have one big flaw in common. They do not examine the situations which can repel the female audience. Try to repel, you'll lose your salary. As a consequence, the most important situations for our lives are left out of the examination. Whereas our channel is not restricted by this kind of limitations. So, men, do you want to learn and unlock the mysteries of human psychology? If you do, then you are welcome to participate with us in deductive analysis of the most interesting episodes from carefully selected, psychologically accurate movies. We invite everyone who wants to learn the method of deduction through examining particular cases to our YouTube channel and Facebook page Minailov in English.